was breaking news to bring you now from the Middle East, where security officials in Lebanon say that dozens of people have been injured after their pages exploded in what's described as one of the biggest security breaches the group has faced in nearly a year of war with Israel. The Hezbollah official says that several hundreds of the uh, hundred members of the group have been wounded. The devices exploded in a number of uh, parts of Lebanon. Residents reported hearing explosions 30 minutes after the initial blasts. Well, the pages that detonated were said to have been the latest model bought by Hezbollah in recent months. Well, in just a moment, we'll speak to our security and defence editor, Deborah Haynes. But first, our Middle East correspondent, Alistair Bunkle. And Ali, uh, what do we know about what has happened here and what's been uh, so far any response from Hezbollah and Israel? It is an extraordinary situation. There are pictures, for anyone who wants to see them, doing the rounds on social media of CCTV cameras in supermarkets and on streets, and then so relatively small explosions coming from people's bags or around their waist, their pockets, their belts, as these pages seem to explode. Now, the numbers injured, unclear, but reports are that over a 1,000 have been injured, that Beirut's hospitals have been put on high alert, there's been calls for blood donations, and the finger is being pointed, as you would expect, at Israel. Israel has not claimed responsibility, responsibility for this, either officially or through sourced briefing. But everybody will assume, given the conflict that is going on between Hezbollah and Israel along the Lebanese-Israeli border, everyone will assume that it is Israel behind this. I think we can also fairly assume that anybody carrying one of these pages was probably relatively senior within Hezbollah. I think that sort of idea is also supported by reports that Iran's ambassador to Lebanon was also wounded when his pager exploded. The reason being that, of course, Hezbollah has been very careful to uh, make sure that it's not being traced and to avoid detection by Israel, and so therefore has avoided using mobile phones, which are pretty easily hacked into these days. Uh, you can trace people, you can listen to conversations, you can read messages, etc. And so it seems as they've been using pagers as a pretty lo-fi device in order to exchange messages. Now, how exactly this happened, uh, we don't know. I mean, most sort of experts in this kind of field that I've been speaking to say that you know you could send a signal to these pages, a sort of coordinated signal that effectively would overheat the battery to the point of explosion. Uh, but to do that, and to do that in a coordinated way and to specific pages, uh, would require a, a level of detail that suggests a major security breach, another major security breach for Hezbollah. Uh, so it will be embarrassing for them, uh, you know, humiliating, but also it puts the question now is how do they respond to this? Because if the reports are accurate and there are more than a thousand wounded, that is a very large number. We've had, we haven't had any reports of fatalities yet, uh, but that is a large number of wounded in a conflict that has been getting more and more heated, uh, particularly in the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. All right. Ali, for now, Andrew, some thanks for that. Let's uh, bring in our security and defence editor, Deborah Haynes. Uh, Deb, great to have you with us. Look, what's your sense of this? As Ali was saying there, it's not entirely clear that if, you know, there was a signal sent to these devices, how they would have exploded. What are your sources telling you? Well, I mean, obviously people are trying to work out what happened, but I've spoken to a security expert and a second expert, actually, who also had the same thought. They figured it, they think it's unlikely that it would um, be overheated batteries alone that would cause the force of the, of the, force of the blast that has um, caused the, the wounds, the injuries that have uh, been shown on social media. Uh, they speculated instead, and it is just speculation, that maybe these pages, if it was known that Hezbollah was shifting from using mobile phones to try to protect their communications, to going old school with pages, which are much more basic, clunky devices, that maybe the pages themselves could have been tampered with initially, even before they were passed to the Hezbollah fighters, maybe even explosives being put inside them that could then be kind of a ticking time bomb uh, to be set off 
at a time of the attacker's choosing uh, by sending, again, it would be a signal, a message to the pager that would then trigger the bomb. And obviously, the battery in the pagers would then amplify the blast. This is just speculation. Uh, I don't know what happened. Clearly, there's going to be an investigation. There will be an investigation going on right now as to how this could have happened. But it is a pretty extraordinary scene to have uh, a, a coordinated attack, multiple pages exploding at around the same time. One of the experts said to me it would be interesting to know whether any of the pages that were turned off uh, also detonated, or, or whether it was only the ones that were on and what particular network they were using, because that could obviously also point to how this attack was, at, was actually orchestrated. But it's also interesting to note that this really is uh, a high-stakes form of what people call like hybrid warfare. Like if there had been a conventional strike that had wounded hundreds of, of people, of Hezbollah uh, fighters inside Lebanon, then you'd be hearing already talks about, uh, about war. Um, but this kind of unconventional attack, where it's not known exactly how it was carried out and who by, uh, makes it all a bit more murky.